about 20 minutes. If you can hold your, hold your questions while I do the, kind of my intro, uh, and then we'll answer a bunch of questions, and then you just gotta remind me when it hits 11.30 because I gotta skedaddle to the next thing I gotta go to, <laughs> okay? Um, if you haven't met me, my name is Tom Judson. I'm the general manager of the POA. Uh, we have a number of board members here today. We have Ruth Hatcher as our chair. Uh, we have Mary Sinkis, and we have Jerry Barron Jr. And where is Jerry? There we go, Jerry, over right over here. So we have actually four members of our board. Uh, we have a couple staff members. Tammy is here, uh, and Keith is here. Keith is here because um, the second Tuesday of every month at 10 a.m. we do a coffee and questions, and we always include the golf personnel. And it's a way that you can come in once a month, you can meet with us and ask as many questions as you want. Um, so we normally do that today, but uh, since we're going for an assessment increase vote, we've kind of replaced that meeting with this meeting, but Keith came just in case anybody had any golf questions or anything like that. We didn't want to, if someone was not aware that we had turned this into a, a, an assessment vote meeting, and they were here to ask questions about golf or something like that, he wanted to be here and accessible. <coughs> All right, we're going to jump right in, and we're going to start with this. And what we've done with this plan is we've tried to incorporate as many benefits as possible into this plan to add more value to your membership and to get rid of as many of the nuisance fees that we currently have. And the nuisance fees that I'm referring to are when we charge you $2 to go here and $3 to go to the gym and $4 to go here and all these different fees. I don't know them all off the top of my head, but all these different fees that we charge, it's a nuisance, it's bothersome, and we want to make it where we add more value to the membership. Right now, with uh, oh, and we have Jim Abramson, he's another member of our board. Hello, Jim. Um, so, uh, right now, we charge $38 for a photo ID card. But on top of that, you have to pay typically a nuisance fee when you go and go use any of our amenities. Under the new plan, we're going to change the name from photo ID card to activity card, and we're going to charge $30. And with that activity card, it's going to include unlimited free access to the pools, the beach, the gym, the lake, the gun range, range balls, green fees at Brittany, and 10% off at the restaurants. So what we try to do is package everything together to make it nice and easy and make it easy for you so you can, with your, mem with your activity card, your member card, you can then go in and do all these different things uh, and have a lot of fun in our community. We're gonna go right into this. Go right in, and we're going to focus on everything on the left-hand page, okay? And Kevin's videoing this. If you're at home, you can go on to our website, and you can print this out. We have another board member. Steve McKee is walking in now, walking out. Yep, I'm walking in. You're <laughs> walking in. Good to see everybody. So we have, uh, looks like we have about six uh, board members here today. Out of nine, that's pretty good. Um, okay, so we're focusing on the left-hand side. Now, what we've tried to do with this plan is we've tried to fix a lot of problems all at one time. We've tried to hit the reset button on things that did not, do not make sense and fix those. Now, people have come to me and said, well, well, who should get credit for the development of this plan? And there is too many people to name. It's two to three hundred different people have been involved in it. We did focus groups, we include, include uh, staff members, we included board members. So there's, there's so many different hands involved in the development of this. It's really pretty neat. Okay, so let's talk about lakes. Here's the first problem that we tried to solve. At the beginning of the year, you get a member card. That's that flexible one that you get in the mail at the beginning of the year. With that member card, you get access to the parks, free access to the parks. But if that park is connected to a, a lake, it does not include access to the lake. So if you're at the park and you decide to go fishing, you decide to go swimming to cool off, you have to pay the lake access fee. Well, that doesn't make sense. 
and it's very hard for our late ranger, rangers to be able to deliver that message. They have to deliver that message 20, 30 times a day to property owners, and property owner going, what? That doesn't make any sense. So with this plan, we're fixing that problem. And you'll notice as we go through here, we, we fix big problems and even small problems. We try to address as many as possible. All right, we're gonna move down to um, annual boat registration. Right now we have five different categories at the recommendation of the Lakes Committee. We're narrowing it down to three. Make it simpler for our property owners. Right now, if you own a 20-foot boat, it costs $210. Under the new plan, it would cost $125. Why are we doing that? Is because over the years we've steadily increased those rates and we've driven people down the road and they're, used, they're taking their boats to Beaver Lake. We've driven them away because of the rate structure that we now have. And the evidence of that is six years ago, there used to be a one year wait list to get a slip at the Loch Lomond Marina. Now, we have 50 empty. Okay. So we have successfully driven all these people down the road, so they live here, they recreate down the road, and then they come back. We need to hit the reset button, we need to solve that problem. Let's move down to mooring. The mooring of an uncovered boat at Loch Lomond Marina will go from 880 down to 500. We want to bring those people back. We want to fill up those 50 empty slips. Okay. Let's move down to recreation. Here's another, another area where we're fixing the problem. Right now, for an annual fitness, it costs you $225 a year. But you can go down to Bentonville for $120 a year. We're, we've driven people down the road. We need to hit the reset button. We need to fix this problem. It doesn't make sense, and we have to fix it. Now, what is not included in the fitness, the fitness membership with your activity card, you'll be able to get in, you'll be able to use the cardio equipment, the, the weights and so forth. What is not included with that is you'll have to, if you uh, do a fitness class, like yoga or tai chi or something to that nature, you know how you have to purchase those cards, okay, per class. The reason why that still is in effect because effectively when you pay that, you're paying for the instructor, okay? So the instructor still needs to be paid. Um, so the activity card gets you into the gym, <coughs> cardio, weights, all that stuff, but it does not include fitness classes. Those are extra, okay? Um, Let's move down to outdoor swimming. So with the activity card, you're gonna get uh, unlimited access to the pools and to the beach. The beach, if you have not been to it recently or at all, <coughs> I recommend you go take a look at it. It is one of the best new things that we've added. We added about two years ago and it's been very successful. People really enjoy it. It's a nice addition, whether you have kids, grandkids, it's a really neat thing. Uh, I encourage you to go over and use it. Go down to gun range. With your activity card, you'll have free access to the pistol or rifle. But here's another example of a situation where we're solving a problem. You go to the skeet and trap, you pay your admission, but then you have to pay for the, for the play targets. So it's like we're nickel and diming you. With this, you'll get free admission. You will have to pay, pay for the play targets. That makes sense. You, as you shoot them, you know, they cost money. You'll have to have to pay for those, and we're not gonna raise the price on play targets, we're not gonna try and get around it or anything like that. Now, you'll notice everything on the left-hand side is for our members and guests of members only. Effectively, what we're doing is we're closing the doors. This really bothered a lot of property owners where they saw non-members using the pools or something of that nature, all right? So everything on the left-hand side will be for members and their guests. How do you get guest passes? Well, you just go down next door over here. You go to member services, you get a guest pass. It costs you, costs you all of zero, and you can get guest passes for your family, for your friends, and so forth. If you own rental units, you can get a guest pass for up to a year for your rental for your renters. Okay, you can make it nice and easy. The POA will not sponsor any guests except for one exception. You've heard of the ambassador program. The ambassador program is if you contact us and say, hey, I'm interested in potentially relocating to Bell Vista, um, what we'll do is we'll pair you up with a volunteer family that lives here. 
Uh, that volunteer family will take you on a tour, take you out to lunch, or take you out to dinner, tell you everything wonderful about Bella Vista. We're gonna, the POA will sponsor, we do about 25 couples a year, we will sponsor those 25. That's it, that's the only exception. The POA will not sponsor any additional people for everything on the left-hand side. Let me go back to the ambassador program. Really successful program. About 25% of every uh, per individual or couple that comes and visits and goes through that program, they end up relocating, re relocating here. So it's a very successful program. <coughs> All right, so I said everything on the left-hand side, effectively, we've closed the door. Everything on the right-hand side, the door remains open. So let's look on the right-hand side. And what is the main reason why the right-hand side remains open to non-members? The main reason is golf. So golf, non-members for golf bring in a million dollars a year. If we eliminated non-member play for golf, it blows up the plan. The plan doesn't work. Okay, that's a million dollars. So everything on the right remains open. So let's look first at tennis. So let's look at, see where it says annual plan individual. Right now you're paying 125. Under the new plan you'd be paying 75. Now why is tennis remaining open? The reason why tennis is remaining open is right now usage of the tennis courts has been decreasing. Right now we only have 24 APT teams. And over half of those APT teams are made up of non-residents. So if you're a tennis player and we eliminated those players, you're not going to have a lot of people to play with. Not a lot of people to compete against. Um, let's move down to golf. See where it says primary discount for uh, payment up front? So right now it's $1,800. We're recommending we re reduce that to $1,600. Why? Is because we have raised those rates over the years. Boy, you've heard that over a couple times. And we have done what? We have successfully driven them down the road. So they live here, they drive down the road, they play golf at a golf course down the road that's potentially not even as good as shade as our golf courses, and then they drive back home. That doesn't make sense. We have to, we have to fix that problem. All right, now move up one, and you'll see primary monthly payment. So you can pay on a monthly basis for your annual golf but we charge you $10 more per month to pay monthly. And some property owners have come to, our, come to us and said, that that doesn't make any sense. $10 extra, it's all automated. You're ripping us off. Well, we do have some fees on a monthly basis. So we do have some month, monthly processing fees. So what we did was we took it down from $10 a month down to $5 a month. We feel that's reasonable. It corrects that problem. So if you pay on a monthly basis for your annual, you're going to save $260 a year. Now let's move down to where it says seat lease and private cart registration. What we've done here is we've simplified the process. Whether you pay, pay you, whether you use your own cart or one of our carts, it's the exact same rate. Both of them are $500. Okay. And why are we doing that? Well, it just makes it easier. When you come in to play golf, Use yours, use ours, we don't care. Now some of our private cart owners disagree with this. Okay. And this is what I told you, what I tell them, is I had Daryl Mundoon, our director of golf, he did some statistics. About two weeks ago we had four shotguns go out. We had 56 private cart owners registered to play golf. Only 19 out of the 56 brought their cart. Why is that? is because they don't want to trailer their cart all over the community. If you live in Highlands and your cart is close by, you'll drive to Highlands to use it, but you're not going to load it up and trailer it all the way over to Dogwood here at Metfield. Okay? So by making it the same rate, it eliminates that problem. Use yours, use ours, we don't care. Nice and easy. Let's go down to green fees. See where it says 18 holes? So these are green fees and cart fees included. See where it says 18 holes, move to the right, you'll see where it says $41. So right now, if you are a property owner that has a photo ID, you're going to pay $41. But the person checking in right behind you is a non-member, and they're paying $50. And you're going, nine bucks off? That's not too good. 
I'm not too happy about that. It's, I'm not getting enough value for my membership. Let's move to the right, see where it says 33. What we're proposing is it would be $33. And for the non-resident, move further to the right, you'll see 52. It would be 52 for the non-resident that checks in after you. So you'd go from a discount of $9 to $19. So you're going from, hey, this isn't much value to, hey, this makes sense. This is fair. And $33 for a round of golf, green fee card included, that is a good rate. We are absolutely taking care of our membership with that kind of rate. All right, move down and see where it says new dash 10 play prepaid. This came from a property owner. We were at a focus group. I referenced that earlier. We had several focus group meetings early in the spring to, to kind of give them an idea of what we were looking at, get their feedback. And they really made, made massive changes to this plan that really improved it quite a bit. So the 10 play prepaid came out of that. This gentleman said, look, I bring out my son. He comes in from out of town to play golf with me. I end up paying 50 bucks for him to play golf. I want him to be able to pay, play for the same rate that I do. I want to be able to bring out my son, my buddy, whomever. So we created the 10 play prepay. You can 10, prepay 10 rounds of golf. They'll play at $33, which is your rate. <clears throat> now you can only purchase 10 rounds per year and you have two years to use them. See, it's readable. At one point, we were talking about only one year to use it, but then we were like, eh, what if the person has a rotator cuff or an elbow problem or something like that? It might put them out of golf for six months and then all of a sudden winter kicks in and they're like, hey, this doesn't make any sense. We give you two years, that should be more than enough time for you to use the 10 rounds of golf. So I use the word reasonable. You'll notice that I've used that word reasonable multiple times. What we're trying to do is get to our reasonableness on our pricing, on our policies, and so forth. All right, let's move down to Brittany Golf Course. So earlier the, this year, we held a meeting at Brittany Golf Course, and about 400 of our residents attended, and most of them were golfers. And we were talking about whether it made sense to keep Brittany open because over the years the number of rounds have steadily gone down, steadily gone down. And the, the community came out for that meeting and they were overwhelmingly, we need to save Brittany, okay? Well, saying that you wanna save Brittany and actually doing it is another thing, okay? So what we've done is with this plan, with your activity card, you can play golf at Brittany for free, okay? That should, hopefully, should increase the number of rounds played at Brittany. Now, if you want to play, if you want to cart, which I do recommend if you play, if you've ever played Brittany, it could be five bucks. So five bucks for a round of golf at Brittany, that is very, very reasonable. Now, we got this idea from the villages in Florida. They do a similar thing. If you want to play an 18-hole championship golf course, you have to pay money. But if you want to play a short course, it's for free. So we kind of copied the idea from another establishment. Um, so you'll see that a lot of different ideas came in to create this plan from different sources. All right, let's move down where it says junior golf. So the kids first bundle is something we came up with a couple years ago, but we haven't seen a lot of people using it. And we think this is great for kids and grandkids. Specifically, I think it's fantastic for um, families, okay? With the kids first, if the, as long as the kids are under 18 years of age, you can, they can play with you a round of golf for free. You can take three of them with you all one time. Kids, grandkids, friends again, grandkids, does not matter, okay? So if you have an annual golf membership, it's included now, where before it was an upcharge. If you only have an activity card, then it's $100. So imagine if you have the kids, the grandkids come for a month to visit, and there's two of them, and you play golf two or three times a week for that entire month, it's gonna more than pay for itself, okay? Now, you do need to be with the kids when you play. We're not a daycare center, all right? Um, but this is a great plan, and we think it's wonderful for families. We have a lot of families in our community, and this should allow mom and dad to take the kids out and play golf at a reasonable price. <coughs> and also, we hope that it will grow the game of golf. 
If you've looked into it, uh, Daryl Muldoon, our head pro, over the last several years has added a tremendous number of junior golf oriented clinics and camps and lessons to grow the game of golf because we know that if the kids play golf, mom and dad will too. All right, now let's move down. Golf fees miscellaneous. You'll see that we've now included range balls. Whether you want to hit some rank, practice range balls or warm up range balls over at Highlands, or you want to go hit balls for two hours at Tanyard Creek, it's included with your activity card. There's my water. There we go. <coughs> All right, we're going to move to the back page on the upper section. Now what we did here is we tried to address a number of concerns that have been bothering property owners. And we tried to address them all, all at one time. So we're going to look under where it says important plan considerations. So last year at this time we were talking about the possibility of building new community centers. And some of our residents loved the ideas, the idea, and some of our resident, residents absolutely hated the idea. This plan does not include a new community center. Now, at some point, we're going to have to renovate Reardon Hall. It is tired and showing its age, just like me. Um, but this plan does not include a new activity center, uh, a new community center. All right, next one down. In 2016, the POA owned 700 lots, and they cast those votes in the assessment vote, and that bothered some property owners. They really did not like that. Now that 700 lots is now down to 80. We've sold a whole bunch of those, okay? The board is in the middle of passing a resolution that will be into effect before this vote takes place that will prohibit them from casting those votes at any time in the future for any type of vote, okay? So we've taken those, vote, those lots off the table, or those votes actually off the table. They will not be cast. The resolution will be in fact in place before this starts, so we're not looking forward to sneak it in at the last minute or anything like that. Okay, addressing another issue. Next one down. This fee schedule we're committing to for three years. Okay, and why are we doing that? Because what we didn't want people to think is that if they approve the assessment increase, that six months down the road we change the fee schedule. Get you out with it. You know, we'll bait and switch, bait and switch it. Okay, we're committing for a three-year period, and this was a lengthy conversation because we were like, "Does it make sense to commit for a year, two years, three years?" We felt three years was a reasonable amount of time. Now, people have come to me and said, "Well, what are you going to do in 2023?" That's a long way away. But we like this plan, the all-inclusive plan. It makes a lot of sense. What's interesting is this all-inclusive plan is similar to a community that I managed previously in North Carolina. It worked with your membership. It included everything, your gym, your beach, your pool, but it didn't include golf. Golf was an upcharge. So it's very similar. I, so I like the plan, so I don't think we're gonna deviate from it from in 2023. I think a three-year period is very reasonable. All right, we're gonna move down. So right now, uh, they're building a lot of trails. And some in our community love the trails, and some in our community do not like the trails. Okay? And a lot of people are particularly concerned about the trails, the trail expansion on the west side. Okay? So what we're saying here is we're gonna hit the pause button for three years. <clears throat> so right now, for the trails that are on the east side, the back 40, the POA spends $35,000 a year on trail maintenance. Okay? For the central area, where we're going to build additional trails, okay, where they're currently building additional trails, and it's not 100% on the central, it goes a little bit west, it goes on the west side of the um, Highlands Gate. We're on, we have a commitment for another $35,000. So the POA will not make any additional financial commitments for at least three years. We're hitting the pause button. You know, the board's going to change over quite a bit in that time frame. We'll revisit it at that time. Now, I always kind of give a little quick segue right now because people talk about the, some people aren't even aware of the $35,000. So, pop quiz. Everybody ready for a quiz? All right. So, all of our amenities are subsidized. Take your $24. 
We carve off a little bit, we subsidize golf courses. We subsidize the lakes. What do you mean the lakes? Well, we have to stock them, we have to fertilize them, we have to patrol them. We have to uh, subsidize the pools. Pool chemicals are very expensive. The tennis courts we subsidize. We subsidize every amenity <coughs> except for one. Anybody know what that one amenity is that we do not subsidize? It's Blowing Springs RV Park. The RV Park and campground is not subsidized. Do you know where the $35,000 in maintenance fees for the east side is charged? It's charged to that department. And, and we still make money. So I always, and I'm going to pick on the golfers. It's usually a golfer that will come to me and go, I can't believe that we've had a $35,000 commitment, and yet we have a $2 million subsidy for golf. So I think it's important that we always put things in perspective. I mean, that's what we do. As a POA, we subsidize every amenity. Okay? That's how we make this system work. If each amenity had to stand on its own two feet, it would not work, and you would not have an amenity-rich community. Okay, so going back. All right, let's look at some scenarios. Back page, bottom section. Okay, We're, and I'm not going to go through all these examples. First example is a couple. Right now, they're paying an HGF membership. That's an annual golf green fee membership, and they're paying, playing, it, paying on a monthly basis $3,320 a year. Private Cart 750, Branchwood Fitness 225, Photo ID 76, total comes down to 4,371. <laughs> Under the proposed plan, it would be 3,720. So the more you do, the more you save. All right, let's look at the one right below that. Example number two, family. We have a lot of families on the east side. And this meeting's on the east side. So Reardon Hall, Reardon Hall Fitness, 450, pool pass, some rounds of golf, photo ID, 979, under the proposed plan it would be 324. Okay. The more, uh, savings of 655. The more you do, the more you save. So what's the opposite of that? The less you do, the less you save. And if you do nothing at all, then you don't save anything at all. So let's look at example number five on the bottom left. So this is a non-user. They don't use the gym facilities. They don't play golf. Da, da, da. Well, they're not going to save anything. Of course they're not going to save anything. But what's interesting is we have a tremendous number of people that have been purchasing photo IDs over the last few years since we opened up the restaurants. And their only activity is getting the 10% off of the restaurants. So while they may not go to the gym, they are still using an amenity. Now look to the right. And you'll see in 2015, the POA did a survey, and 35% of all the respondents said the reason why they do not use POA amenities is because of the nuisance fees. We charge $2 here, and $3 here, and $4 here, and it drives them crazy. So in giving these speeches, this is my 30th out of 60, um, people have come to me afterwards and said, I have never purchased a photo ID card but I am going to after this, because I like this activity card plan. I like the all-inclusive, where the activity card includes free gym membership, um, pool, uh, lake, a beach, gun range, range balls, green fees at Brittany, and 10% off of the restaurants. They like that all-inclusive package. All right, let's go to the front page on the bottom section of the front page. Okay, so right now we charge $24, and we've charged $24 since, two, since 01. So it has not gone up for 19 years. We're proposing an $11 increase that would take us to 35. How do we come up with that? How do we make sure that the number was reasonable? Okay, I've used that word <coughs> often today, reasonable. So what we did was we took $24 in 2001, and there have been 15 Social Security cost of living adjustments since 2001. And if you apply those adjustments each year all the way to 2020, you get $34.92, otherwise known as $35. We use that as a, as a benchmark, as a gauge 
Now we did other financial analysis, but that's the easiest one to explain. And I think it demonstrates that while some people are going, oh my God, we're going from 24 to 35, it's reasonable. Now what's interesting is when I talk to property owners, re each quarter we have a meeting of new property owners. Has anybody went, gone to one of those new resident meetings? A lot of those people are from other states, California, what have you, and they go, 35 bucks, that's ridiculous. I mean, in North Carolina, I paid 75 bucks for a pool and some yard maintenance, and that was it. We didn't get nearly as many amenities as we have here. All right, so where's the $11 going to go? So $6 is going to go to offset the fees. So if we lower recreation, and we lower golf, we got to replace that money with something. So the $6 offsets that, it's a net wash. Now some people have come to us and said, well, how do you calculate that? How do you make sure you get your, your estimates correctly? Correct, that's good English. How do you get it correct? What we did was we estimated a zero increase. For example, we sell 10,000 photo ID cards a year. Under this plan, we should sell more Activity cards, we should say, I would think that we would see an increase in the number of activity cards that we sell. What's the problem? Is it going to be a 10% increase? A 20% increase? A 30? I have no idea. And any increase that I apply to it is a guess. And we don't want to guess. So we estimated zero increase. With the uh, golf rates that we're proposing, with the boat fees that we're proposing, we should see an increase in usage. I would think 10%, 20%, it's a guess. So we went flat all the way across. It was the most conservative way to go. Next one down. $2 is gonna to go to offset the, the cost of the Trafalgar fire. The good news is, is that we were able to get the fire out in 28 days at a cost of $4 million. And that $4 million is a lot less than the state had estimated. The state had estimated 22 to 37 million, and they were estimating it would be 10 more months of smoke, which would mean that as of today, we would have five more months from today of smoke. We got it done in 28 days. So the good news is we only spent $4 million. The bad news is we spent $4 million, and we got to replace that money. And this, is unfortunately, is a burden that our community must bear. Now, a property owner raised their hand and said, well, is that going to be all? Is that going to be, is the four million it for the Trafalgar Fire? And here's the challenge. We won't know for three to five years. We, don't, we won't know. We're going to be in court for three to five years. And who knows what the resolution of all that is? I think, based upon my knowledge of the case and everything, that we're in a good position. But who knows? And we won't know for three or five years. And chances are there will be tons of appeals and all that lovely stuff. Okay, so we won't know what the end number is for three to five years. But a property owner, another property owner said, well, but what are you going to do once it's paid for? And I was like, that's a really good point. So we put in here, once it's paid for, it then goes into reserves. All right, let's move down. $2 is going to go to offset operational expenses. So we're running a 2020 business based upon a 2001 funding model. It does not work. Inflation has gotten us. It does not work. Now, some people have said, well, you spun off the city. Well, no. The reality is, is when we spun off the city in 07, remember that was in 07, so that was a dozen years ago, a lot of people have overinflated how much of a savings that should be. End result is there should have been a, a savings about two million bucks, 1.6 million bucks. But everybody forgets that exactly the same time that we spun off the city was also the Great Recession. Okay. At that exact same time, it's unrelated to spinning off the city, but it's, it's also at the exact same time, our transfer fees that we collect went from 900,000 down to 100,000 at the exact same time. So the net gain should have been from to the POA should have been about a million six, and that was a dozen years ago. We have a twenty-eight million dollar operation. Let's make it the math easy. 
a $20 million operation, if you had a 2.5% increase in cost of in, in inflation, that's a half a million dollars a year. Inflation has gotten it. So what I say is long short of it is the math does not work. It no longer works. All right, let's move down. One dollar is going to go towards reserves. We thought we had an ample amount of reserves, and then we learned about the Trafalgar fire. And that took the majority of those reserves. We have some reserves, but not nearly enough. And we need to be prepared for the next flood, the next tornado, what have you. Moving down. Two dollars for unimproved property owners. And some of our property owners have said, well, that doesn't make sense, Tom. It's $11 for our improved, but only $2 for our unimproved. Who is benefiting the most from this plan? It's our improved property owners can benefit the absolute most. The other thing I point out is two other things. Right now, the POA collects approximately $8 million in annual assessments. Four of the eight comes from unimproved property owners. They pay less, but there's more of them. So they carry a lot of weight. They carry half the weight of the assessments. Now I know, we know, our team knows that unimproved property owners use the amenities less than everybody else. So what I, what we did, I, I had IT run some numbers for me. We put all of us in the middle and we drew a circle, a 40 mile circle all the way around it. We wanted to look at the usage by people that live outside of that 40 mile circle. Okay, The people that in Wisconsin, the people in Michigan, everywhere else. They were unimproved property owners and they live 40 miles away. Now, in total, we have 25,000 unimproved lots. Okay, Now, not all of them are owned by people that are 40 miles away. But we wanted to look at the activity of people that live far away. Only 500 used our amenities over a 12-month period. So I'm talking one round of golf, one trip to the fitness center, one hamburger. That's it. Over a 12-month period, only 500 used it. The reality is our unapproved property owners do not use our amenities that much. Now, with that being said, everybody knows that guy. And that guy is the one that lives in Benville, owns a membership lot, and plays a ton of golf. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is that guy. But they are the exception to the rule. So when you look at this plan, I would ask you to consider this. We have 39,008 lots. We have 39,008 property owners. There is no perfect plan. No perfect plan will address every single property owner's concerns. There is none. Okay? We have to get do the best we can to make it make sense for the most amount of people. There will always be exceptions. Absolutely. A property owner raised their hand at one of the meetings and said, I own four homes. Does that mean that I have to pay four times the 11? Well, my first reaction was, good on you, you got four homes. Um, but yes, you do have to pay. There is no bulk discount. I own my home, I own the empty lot next to it. Okay, so I'm prepared to pay the 11 plus the two. There is no bulk discount. Um, so it's interesting in talking to people about this plan, they'll go, I like the plan as a whole, but I don't like this little piece. Or I don't, I like the plan as a whole, but I don't like this piece. What's good, is that what they're picking out is not the same thing every time. It's a little here, a little here, a little here, a little here. That tells me we got pretty close on this. But keep in mind, and I've already said this, 29,008 property owners, there is no perfect plan. Because uh, it's all debated based upon your interests. Do you play tennis? Do you play golf? Do you not do anything? Do you own multiple properties? So we try to do the best. All right, so I'm going to give you uh, oh, critical dates. <clears throat> you must be a member in good standing as of September 30th. Good standing, pay your assessments. Okay, that's good standing. It means you get a ballot. If you're not in good standing, you don't get a ballot. Make sense? 
2016, we had a property owner went on Facebook and was like, I didn't get a ballot, they shorted me. We looked at their account. We didn't post this. <laughs> they had, we're not paid up. That's why they, if you don't get a ballot. Now, if there's a problem, give us a call. Give us a call. Give member services a call and say, I think there's a problem. Because what ends up happening is when people change their mailing address or their email address, they tell everybody except the POA. They never, they never tell us. Okay. Next date, October 9th is when the ballots will go out. If you, if we have your email address on file, you will receive an e-ballot. I would appreciate it if you voted via email. It's cheaper for the POA. All right. Uh, if we only have, well, everybody will receive a paper ballot, uh, so uh, you'll get those, they'll be placed, physically placed in the mail on the 9th, October 9th, so you'll get them a couple days later. Okay. November 19th is when the election, when the vote ends. We will have a meeting at Reardon Hall at 6 p.m. Uh, the elections committee will reveal the results. Uh, everything is tabulated by an outside firm. It's the same firm that we've been using through since 2016. If this is approved, it will go through, uh, the uh, increase will be effective as of January 1. So I'm almost done here. So with an activity card, you're going to get on the use of the lakes, the pools, the beach, the gym, the gun range, <coughs> range balls, um, Brittany, Green Freeze at Brittany, and Mission Off Restaurants. So, I'm going to ask one thing of you. Tammy's going to hand out. Uh, in 2005, hold on, no, hold on. In 2005 and 2006, we had 105 volunteers make calls. These are outbound calls. Um, what I'm asking of you is to donate one to two hours of your time. We're going to start as of uh, September 23rd all the way to October 11th, okay? Uh, we're gonna make outbound calls. It's really easy. It's gonna be at the, at the country club in the boardroom. We'll provide you with a binder. It'll have the property owner's name and their telephone number. We have a laminated script that is really easy for you. All And 60% of all the calls that you make go to voicemail. And it'll effectively be is, hello, Mr. Smith, this is Tom from the Bella Vista POA. You're going to receive your ballot soon after October 9th. I really appreciate it if you vote. If you have any questions about the plan, please go to the POA's website. That's it. We're not asking you to tell them to vote yes. We're asking you to tell them to vote. We have a very high threshold. It's a 50% <coughs> threshold to get to a quorum. We would like to get, and if we don't hit that threshold on the first try, we can go back out with the same question and within 90 days, and the quorum goes from 50%, which is hard to reach, down to 25%, which is easy. But the problem is, is each time we go for a vote, it costs $40,000, and I'd like to pay only $40,000 once, okay? The moral of the story is, we have six board members here, we have staff member here, myself. We cannot do it alone. We need you guys to get out there, we need you to talk. Um, you will see in the lobby, there are some yard signs. If you wanna take a yard sign, you're welcome to take one. Uh, but the calling, we really need your help. Our goal is 300. We're already at 200 and 206 volunteers, that's a lot better than 105 from 2016. Um, but uh, we really want to push this uh, and get the vote out. So Tammy's going to send that around and we'll open up to questions. Yes, ma'am. I just moved here in January of 2018 and I go to the Ville Community Center because of the cost of, of using facilities that, that I didn't know cost when I moved, which maybe I didn't read it or something, I don't know. But anyway, um, I think the plan sounds good, but you say three years is a long ways away. Three years is like a snap of your fingers. I, I, I'm, I'm almost 65, and even to me, it's a snap of my fingers. There are people here that are older than I am, and three years is nothing. Okay, I, my concern is, can the POA board just all of a sudden put these fees back in place for the amenities in 2023? 
And if they can, they shouldn't there be something in this that says if we raise, if we put the amenity fees back in place, the assessment goes away? Because that would be fair. I would say this is I understand your point of view, but I think that three years is very reasonable. I think that uh, come uh, three years from now, well, four years actually, uh, three years. Uh, three years. We'll need to we'll need to potentially make some adjustments to this plan. We with this many changes that we're making all at one time, uh, we're gonna get something wrong. Okay, I we're gonna get something wrong. And the example I keep on using, and it's a tired example, but I think it's a valid example is. You can't go to McDonald's and ask them how much they're going to charge for a Big Mac in 2023. They're not going to answer that question. You're asking for an $11 a month increase for people that are on limited incomes, which I'm going to be, I mean, I'm, I had to retire from my job and come out to take care of my mother when she was ill. Mm -hmm. So I'm on a fixed income. And you're asking for $11 increase, which is great if I can then drop my membership down there and come up here. But in three years, if you all of a sudden reinstate these fees, then I'm back to square one. And I've got, if I want to work out, I've got to either go somewhere else again or you know, move away. Because so I, I would say this, so. I, don't, I don't think we're going to agree on this one because I feel that a three-year commitment is very reasonable. I like this plan. I think, it's, I think it's reasonable, but I think at the same time you should say that it cannot be raised, that the fees cannot be reinstated unless the increase goes away and if that happens then we vote again on something else at that point in time if you find it i mean i i don't disagree with you that that there may be some things here that you're not figuring are going to cost as much as they're going to cost and you may need to put something in place but in three years i can tell you right now if all of a sudden they say okay now it's going to cost 225 dollars again if you want to use the pools it's going to cost 225 dollars again if you want to use the gym i'm going to be really upset and I don't mind paying $11 extra a month. That's not a problem. But if those fees get reinstated, I'm going to be very upset. And I understand. That's that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I can't crystal ball. Yeah, but you uh, could. They could put something in about the fees cannot be increased without the assessment <coughs> going back. They could. So we're going to move on because I don't. Okay. Unfortunately, we're not going to okay. agree on that. Okay. okay. Then I, have no, I agree with you. Yes, yes ma'am. I'd like to ask okay, Mary let's have one conversation at time, please. On the percentage of property owners that own unimproved lots, what did you can you tell us what percentage of those live more than 40 miles away? Off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, I'm I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> I know some numbers off the top of my head. I don't. I honestly do not know. If you want to send me an email, okay. I can have IT run a stat on it, but I don't know that number off the top of my head. Okay. Thank you. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, I would think that what who lives within the 40 mile radius would be more important because how many of those people are using the amenities and they're getting a two dollar increase? Why is it not a you know, why are they not getting the same type of increase or a little bit more increase? Because they're, if they're using the amenities. So that but one I, also, I do know the number of them. Okay. And okay, the, okay, so the answer on that, is, and, I want, and I just want to do one question per person at a time because I want to make sure everybody gets a chance. Um, of our unimproved property owners, only 9% have used the amenities one time in 12 months. Okay. So, I view it, you can view it as in 9% use the amenities, and so that means that's a lot. I view it on the other side. 91% do not. There is no perfect plan. There is no mechanism. I know this is in 2013 or 14, the board adopted a plan that for an unimproved property owner to get a photo ID, they had to pay the difference. Okay. Whatever the difference, the difference in the assessments, they had to pay, it was like almost $100 more for their photo ID. Okay. That was a way of trying to make the tables level, if you want to call it. But what happened to boat usage, golf usage, and everything else? It plummeted. So there is a balancing act. 
Um, so that's why I'm very honest and I say, yes, everybody knows that person that lives in Bentonville and has a membership lot and pays less and uses amenities a tremendous amount. Absolutely. But they are the exception, not the norm. All right, I'm going to go swing all the way over here because I don't want to be, yes, sir. So is this plan the plan that's going to be voted on? Yes, it is. So if you guys have an aha moment like tomorrow and say we can name this tune for $9 instead of 11 there's going to be no change. Right? The this board has already voted to move forward with this plan. Uh, it's a great question because actually I was talking with someone yesterday about it is, you know, what have I learned in, in giving 30 speeches? What have I learned? What's the reaction been? And the reaction is what I exact what I, exactly what I said is that as a whole they like it <coughs> they don't like this or they don't like that they don't like this so they they but what's good and I think what you're kind of trying to address is they they're not saying the same thing if it, I would be very concerned if every single meeting I was saying except for this except for this except for this I like if they were picking on the exact same thing over and over again. That would, that would tell me that I missed, I, we, we missed something. Um, but so that there's, has no, been, there's no chance that, that this plan will change before the vote? I No, I, I don't, well, ultimately it is a vote of the board of directors, mm -hmm. but they've already taken that, they've already passed that vote. Okay. They could change their mind and re-vote, they have that right. Uh, I don't think so. I think this is a good quality plan, I think that uh, from, the reaction that I'm getting in the community has been very good, very positive. Uh, so I don't think we're going to change it. And, and, and always remember the rule of unintended consequences. If you change one thing, you might make this group happy and upset this group. And then the reverse, and uh, you know, there is no perfect plan. There is no. Yes, sir. So if I recall correctly, the ADEQ and the PA. PLA, um, we're going to go after responsible parties for the Trafalgar fire. How are we responsible parties for the Trafalgar fire? Why are we being charged? I don't get it. So let's, we'll, we'll cover the first portion of that question, okay? So the POA is cross-claiming against the other PRPs, potentially responsible parties, okay? Uh, meaning that we can go after them to recoup the expenses. By signing the executive, the administrative order with ADEQ, we acquire that ability. So we put out the fire and then we can turn to the other ones and go, okay, you need to cough up and you need to pay us. Of course, that has to go through a court system because nobody's going to willingly, unfortunately, nobody's going to willingly do that. Um, so between that and between the insurance that the POA has, it is possible that the POA could come out clean on this. Possible. But it also is possible when you go to a jury that we could come out the opposite of clean. And then the challenge is that we have is that that is a wide range of numbers. You know, you could go from zero all the way to oh my god. Okay. To address your specific question, this is a tough burden that our community has to bear, especially for the people on the east side. I've had people come to me and say, look, I live on the east side, I dealt with the smoke for almost a year, and now you're asking me to take $2 of the increase and apply it, and I was burdened by the smoke already. I understand that. So the first thing is I legally cannot carve out anybody. So this section does not get this increase. You can't legally do that. But second of all, I would ask you to view this the way that we who put this plan together view it. We view it not individually, but as a community. I think the best analogy is something <clears throat> similar to our public schools. I do not have school-age kids anymore, but I pay taxes that go towards the kid and go towards schools. So I view things in a community way, not in an individual way. And I don't think we're going to agree on this point, but at the end of the day, as a community, we must bear this expense. Yes, sir. Do we still, uh, do we own that property now? Or is, no, we is, do not. The original owner 
the, the, so Browns Tree Browns Service, Tree Service. currently owns it as part of the administrative order uh, with ADQ. <coughs> we are required to try to gain ownership of this. Okay, and it specifically says attempt or try. You know, I can't force them to sell it to us. We have reached out to them. We've had very early negotiations, uh, but we're dealing with their lawyers, so we're not getting far fast. <laughs> Um, uh, but we still have the right to access. I mean, you, you see that uh, we're, we're, we're irrigating it, we're seeding it. Um, and that's us, not them. That is the POA, because uh, part of uh, the plan is we have to stabilize that, that area. Now, what's interesting is um, when they were shaping that area early on, several months ago, we had horrendous rain and it didn't go anywhere. But we still, by vegetating it, it'll make sure that it will stabilize and, and stay there permanently so it's done. We don't want it going down in that valley or anything like that. We want it to stay stabilized. So we added irrigation. And what our hope is, is that we can get it growing enough and then we're gonna take a large portion of those parts, irrigation, you'll see it's above, lawn, above ground, and then we'll, um, towards the beginning of part of next year, will hopefully take all that equipment over, all that irrigation equipment over to the west side because by then we should have that area getting ready to close up and we'll have to vegetate that site also. So we're trying to do things in an intelligent way and save some money. Okay. Okay. Kind of a long answer to your question, but I wanted to give the whole thing. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is kind of more of an observation, marketing-wise, with a little bit of a question in there. Sure. Um, you had stated 35% of people responded because of the fees. Uh, what about the other 65%? I would like to know that. And also, <clears throat> the other thing I would like to know is you have zeroed out the um, cost for the saying that there's not going to be an increase um in um for the usage like you were saying about the boats and stuff um what have you assumed for the wear and tear if there is an increase say that more people are on the lakes more people are here what is the additional wear and tear my marketing is all of your fee examples show a savings regardless of the uh 132 except when it comes down to people who do not use that. Um, this, of course, is an uh, income um, opportunity for the POA. That's, uh, of course, how it's presented, that we will pay an additional 11 or 2 or both, depending upon how many lots people have. Um, so you're saying the more you use, the more you save. However, there's a lot of people here that will probably never use. Um, I have several friends that are on limited incomes that are unable to use. I can understand your point, and also uh, Steve has told me in the past that you can't exempt people from the increase, but I guess it comes down to marketing-wise, because okay, so you're marketing so, this to... So you're covering a lot of issues. Well, you're, mar yeah, you're marketing this to people to, hey, you're going to save money. You're going to save money. Yeah. That money comes from somebody, and that somebody is the non-user. So who is the non-user? You have 30% because of the fees. Who's the 65? So it comes around. Okay, so first of all, I want to make sure that when you look at this and you do the comparison, for whatever reason, a lot of people are missing this top line where it says clearly how much the additional cost is. So I want to make sure that that's a, that that's a plus. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to make sure that that's included. And yeah, for some people, this plan will not work. Okay, if you do nothing. Now, hold on. When I was I was speaking with a lady, I'm going to give you an example. Um, I was speaking with uh, an older lady the other day after one of the meetings and she said, Tom, I don't do, you know, I, I, I won't save anything at all, okay? I don't, I don't do anything. And I asked a couple different things because I, you know, we want to look community, not individually, is do your neighbors play tennis? Do your neighbors use the fitness center? Um, 
do, not just about you, but what about the people around you in your neighborhood? What about uh, the person that potentially buys the lot from you in the future? Are they active? Uh, we know that the trails, I've, I've spoken with numerous real estate agents that have said that half of every transaction, uh, real estate transaction, has to do with the trails. Uh, that the trails are, you know, if you can come straight out and get to a trail very quickly from your home, that's a really nice benefit. Um, now what's interesting is that I was talking to this lady, while she does nothing now, what was interesting is when, when her husband was around, unfortunately she's a widow, is they used to play a lot of golf. So they used to be a lot, of, you know, used to use the amenities a lot. Um, and so I kind of go back to that same analogy of kids in public schools. But um, that is a necessity. <coughs> um, Absolutely. Are a luxury. Absolutely. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, we, we are, but we are an amenities-based community. Yes. We, we have a lot of amenities. So I, I hold in one question per person because I want to yeah, make sure I share. This is, no, this is not a question, but it's just getting back to this in marketing is presented as a savings, but the only way that the POA is going to furnish more uh, income is by having uh, more people who do not use the amenities. That's, I mean, no, no, it, I, that's, that's, no, that's just I, I would, uh, I, I would, accounting. I would expect that we are going to see an increase in usage, and we've included in our models, for example, we know that we're going to have an not increase. How you're yet. This is how you're marketing it. I understand, but we can't explain every single bit and piece about the plan in a marketing piece. But we have accounted for um, increased usage in our amenities. Okay, we've accounted for that. Um, I mean, like here, you're not going to need an additional person behind the counter, but the cardio equipment could wear out quicker. Okay, and we factor that in in our calculations because we want to make sure we're going to have to replace it more often and sooner, or how about the same thing, uh, because of that. Okay, next question. I have a question about operations. Sure. All, all the amenities uh, that will become free with the activity card, are they operations as normal for the next three years? Is that a commitment as well, or will they have some shutdown on certain parts of the town? Um, money spent the same. Will we close some of the amenities? So we're saying that we're going to Well, for instance, like Branchwood, you know, that changed into a park. Will, will Kingswood change to something different? Or will they all remain the same operations as they are now? Our plan is to have everything remain as is. With that being said, Kingswood is in a flood zone, and I cannot crystal ball the future. Uh, but our plan is... <clears throat> okay, for instance, Brittany, the, the play doesn't go up. Is that going to... You up for discussion to close again? Oh, I think it's good. I think that uh, it would be best. I would. I would say that we would have to forestall that question for a minimum of three years. Um, uh, I in a three-year period, we're going to get a really good idea of what what's going to happen at Brittany, whether it worked or not. Uh, you know, one year can be influ influenced by weather um, and other things. But uh, great question. But with all intentions. Operations as normal. Yeah, we, we, I, yeah. I, well, I was thinking that you were going on the negative that we're no, going to do no. this, but we're going to at the same time close stuff. Not negative. So let me talk about the negative for a little bit, and I don't like talking about the negative at all. Um, if this does not go through, and I already mentioned earlier that the math does not work, we will have to close amenities probably in two to three years from now. It's going to have to happen because the math does not work. Um, and where we, the board came to the community, the board and the, the golf committee came to the community and asked their opinion regarding Brittany, uh, we're not going to be able to ask that opinion, you know, because we're going to have to make logical choices and we're probably going to upset a lot of people. Uh, <coughs> but, uh, you know, when it's going to be a, a realistic, so enough on the negative. Uh, yes, sir. Is there a contingency plan if, if the vote is no? Uh, have you guys talked about? I was a little surprised that maybe you didn't look at a staggered plan. In other words, some people can swallow 
five dollars next year and three more the year after that kind of thing have you looked at that or is that a contingency for if it's a no vote maybe to come back with a compromise okay so two different questions i'm going to split it in two okay so for this year's budget we're actually going to we're going to prepare two sets of budgets we're, for simplicity we're calling it the past budget and the fail budget okay so we are preparing ourselves for either eventuality. And that requires you to have two completely different <clears throat> mindsets. And I've recommended our team to actually write one and then write the other, because it's a completely different hat that you have to put on. Um, the second thing is um, the staggered, actually I like the staggered idea. We looked at that closely. Um, where you phase it in, so it's eleven dollars. Now, it, correct, I, and I like that idea. Um, and it was um, now it can only be over a three-year period, meaning so you could go like plus six and plus three, sure. and then get yourself to eleven. Okay, you can't do it. It can't be beyond. Our governing documents do not allow us to go beyond. I wish they would. Uh, quick segue: um, Hot Springs Village. Uh, if you look at their, they were founded five years after us. If you look at their governing documents and ours, they are identical except for one area. The board of directors at Hot Springs is allowed to vote in a cost of the living adjustment each year. That's why they're at 65 and we're at 24. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus, they had a, they plus in 2015 they uh, approved an increase of 28 dollars. But that's why they're at 65 and we're not. Um, the reason, so I like that idea and I thought it would make it more palatable, in my opinion. Okay, I'm only speaking for myself. I can't speak for the board. I thought it would make it more palatable. Um, but the six dollar, the six dollars that's going to go to offset the uh, the golf and the wreck, that's immediate. Okay. So if we went $6 for the first year, you're really not gaining any ground. The biggest issue that argued against that, the Trafalgar fire. Because that's such a, it's such a variable number that you can't predict. Uh, while I don't think that we're gonna get a resolution within one year, it's possible. And I'd hate to be in a situation where, for us to be in a situation where, um, we need the money immediately, yet we don't have access to it. So that was the main, that was the lot. I agree with your logic, and then we ended up backing away from that logic, for, and it was strictly because of Trafalgar. Yes, sir. Uh, John Downing, uh, a couple of comments. Number one, I wanted to, to thank you and the folks who put this together. And it's, and it's just a visual document to begin with. I thought it was one good first cut. Second cut, maybe, but uh, really good. So thank, thank the folks who put this together. Number two, you did not answer this lady's question about the other 65% and what it, why are they not using the facilities? Oh, okay. And then finally, number three, respectfully, I think you need to really go back and rethink this comment about 2023. I thought you blew that off a little bit too quickly, respectfully. Uh, the other reason why uh, we had the other 65%, and it was not a true 65%, meaning you could give multiple reasons. It wasn't just one, it would, so it doesn't add up to 100%, okay? Um, the other reason, and I don't remember, it was in 2015, I think the other big one was they did not like the condition of our, the POA amenities. And a lot of those were before 16, which is when we started renovating a lot of the amenities. I think that was the other big one, is they didn't like it. Um, and beyond that, I can't remember anything more. But I think that was the other big issue. Um, but the number one, if you send me an email, I will give you the stats on that. Because uh, uh, I don't. I understand at a certain point, not everybody's going to agree on everything. I was not trying in any way to blow you off. At some point, it gets to a point where we're going to have to respectfully disagree. Um, and, and I'm going to use the kind of the same answer that I used just for this gentleman is. The unpredictability of the Trafalgar fire really makes the, 
the, the and I'm not trying to criticize you in any way when I say crystal balling. Um, you're asking me to crystal ball the future, and I would probably, if it wasn't for the Trafalgar fire, I would probably say, okay, we could probably make some sort of, we can't increase it more than X number of percent. The Trafalgar fire throws a huge curveball into the whole thing. It's such an unpredictable thing, especially three years from now, that, you know, I would, you know, we may, we can't, I can't predict the future, and it gets even harder, and the consequences of it are even harder. So, I would say that, do you understand what I'm, where I'm going with? Meaning, okay, so let's go through, let's fast forward three years from now, and we get nothing but bad news about uh, the Trafalgar fire. Expensive, bad news. Okay? That's a possibility. <coughs> we need the $11 at that point, absolutely, and we may have to increase some of our uh, user fees. It may, we may be forced to do that because we have no choice. I mean, so back up a little bit. Let, let's, and I'm going to give you a, a little bit of, I want to make sure people have perspective. So earlier I was talking about, I'm sorry, I'm ignoring half the group here. Um, earlier I talked about that we have raised our rates to an unreasonable level. I referenced that multiple times, like with the uh, fitness plan, uh, the golf, the boat. Why did we do that? Did we willingly make, make bad decisions? Okay. Or was it the only decision that could be made by the board? Okay. So the community has re rejected an increase eight times over 19 years. So the logical lever that you pull is an increase in assessments. But if that's taken away from you, then you only have a limited number of levers that you can pull and you start going, wow, I want to increase golf fees to bring in more money. That's the only lever I can pull. Uh, that's my only choice. But what we've learned is every time we pull that lever, we really don't have a net gain. We actually lose, we actually, uh, the money actually ends up to be about even, but the usage goes down. Every time we think, golf is the easiest one to, to so I'm not, I don't want everybody to think I'm only golf oriented, but the numbers are easiest, is every time we've increased golf, we've decreased usage. To the point where it's almost like we get a minor increase in revenue. So I guess the end of the story is, <coughs> we can't tie our hands. And you're not saying, you're kind of saying that, but we can't tie our hands because I can't predict the future. And well, we have are, a you're big tired. variable. You're tying our hands. I, I don't. I, I agree. I, I understand your perspective, but I just want to make sure that there's a there's a lot of what the board does is a balancing act, sure. and it's and it's and it's a hard balancing act because uh, any any time you balance it, you're going to make one part of the community happy and another part of the community upset, and you're constantly trying to do what is best for the whole, and so when, I, when I've referenced a couple times in some of these answers where I say community, I want to make sure that everybody is thinking community because that's what the board thinks. They think community, not individually. If you go, if you, you, you absolutely can come up with a hundred examples of where individually the plan absolutely is horrible. But as a community, I think it makes sense. And we're trying to add as much value, I think that, I think while you, it is impossible to improve, to prove property values, why property values go up or why property values go down, I'm not nearly intelligent enough to prove that. I feel that part of the reason why the property values have gone up over the last several years is because of the improvements that we've made. That's my opinion. You may not agree. My opinion is it's partially. I think with this plan being so robust that it's going to assist our, it's going to help our property values. That's my opinion. I think if we start closing things, I think that will have a detrimental impact on our property values. And I look over a 10-year period, okay, 
Am I going to sell my house in 10 years? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But in a 10 year period, this increase is going to cost me personally $1,300. Well, Menor, I forgot, but I forgot the uh, unapproved lot. Make it easy, $1,300. Over a 10 year period, yet closing amenities could have much more than a $1,300 detrimental impact to my property values. But I think that this is such a robust plan that when people come and view our community and are looking at moving here, they're going to go, wow, you get all of that. So imagine a person coming from another state. First of all, they're going to chuckle at 35 bucks. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to downplay the $35 because we have a lot of property owners that are on tight fixed incomes. But the majority of people that come from other states that move here, they laugh at the $35. So in addition to the $35, for $30 more, you're going to get all the other stuff that I've mentioned. A free gym membership with, for, for 30 bucks on top of I think that will have a very positive impact on our community. Not only the, the property values, but the enjoyment. Okay? Because, because many times, the board looks at things from, not from a traditional dollars and cents point of view, but from an enjoyment and usage. For example, so who referenced Branchwood earlier today? You did. Okay, so we took a failing golf course that we were charging $2 a round, and nobody was, very few people, every time I say nobody was playing it, someone goes, I know. No. Very few people were playing that golf course. It's now a walking trail with a disc golf course. Walking trail is good for just about everybody, more so for the older people. The disc golf is fantastic for the younger set. Okay? We repurposed that land, and what happened? 2017, the winter, winter 2017, we added 30 additional parking spots because of the usage went through the roof at that location. So to me, that's a success. So we took a place that, uh, an amenity that was being underutilized by our property owners and took it in, in, took it to something where all of a sudden we have to expand the parking lot by 30 spots because it's being used so much. So I always like to look at, I have way too detailed on this question. Yes, sir, ma'am, uh, either. Go ahead. I just have, I'm, I'm sorry, because, because you're signing the, the Trafalgar fire, which I'm not disagreeing with, but because you're citing that as the reason why you can't think of anything else, I'm just, have you, can, can you tell me, you talked to an attorney, are we as owners, property owners, jointly and severally liable for no. if we get a huge judgment against That's us? Potentially, no. no. Okay. no. Okay. It, it cannot come back to you okay. personally. Okay. No. Thanks. Unless you, like, personally went in there and started. Okay, Start the fire or really unreasonable. Uh, so I can't, I'm Thank not you. a lawyer. I do not claim to be a lawyer. But I'm no, you they, they, they not go after you individually. Absolutely okay. no. Thank but you. that's a valid question. And I asked that question very Thank early you. on Thank because you. I wanted to make sure because I knew I would get that question yes. at Thank some you. point. Um, but it, it, it does. In a way, it directly linked to you right. because you have the, the, right. the POA, right. and the POA, you know, if the POA had to absorb thirty-seven million dollars to put out the fire, we don't have thirty-seven million right. bucks. Right. I mean, so what happens to the POA? And that's a qu another question we had to deal with at the time: <laughs> is what happens? What's Plan B, C, and D? Before? All right, we got about ten minutes left, um, uh, ma'am. Um, so when we are out of town, sometimes for longer periods of time, we rent out our home. Um, what are guests who come from out of state or even out of city, what are they going to be able to use under this plan? Is there something that they're excluded from? Okay, so 15% uh, year of VRBO, but 15% of our, uh, of our uh, residents are renters. Long term, short term, short term in your case. Okay. You can give them a, a guest pass, and they can get into everything. There is a user fee. They're going to have to pay the, the, the nuisance fees that I was talking about. Well, the nuisance fees stay for them. Okay. So they can use the gym. The, they can play golf. They can do all that stuff. They're just going to have to pay for it. 
Um, we can't transfer your rights. In 81, the POA was sued by a property owner, may have been 81, 82, something like that, was sued by a property owner and they said, I do not agree that you should be, the property owner should be able to assign their rights to a renter. And the courts ruled in their favor. So we must live with that. You can get a guest pass for member services but for we, zero. We personally have to go do it. Or you can do it pay? online. You can do it online. Okay. We try to make it as easy as possible. Okay. Uh, and it's free. Uh, and you can make it for the, I would prefer that you make it for the, their entire stay and not longer than that because I don't want them giving it to someone. Right, right. Um, but if you're a renter, a long-term renter for a year, I mean, I was talking to a renter that's on their fourth or fifth year, and every year they go into their landlord and they get it to be passed pass for a year. And that's, so nothing will change with this new plan? Nothing will change for them. In fact, none of the rates have changed. It's the only rate that we've changed is the golf rate. Okay. Okay, that would be 50 to 52 for the non-resident, non-member. Which I think is fair. I mean, yeah. it actually helps when out of town people who usually have to pay more to do things come here and it's Oh yeah, our growth rates are very reasonable. Yeah. Compared okay. to the nation. Yeah. So yes sir. I have a little problem with sounds like you need thirteen dollars. You need eleven and two, but I have a little problem with the span between unimproved and improved. We all get the same package. But as a homeowner, I'm paying eleven dollars for a month. The man next door to me that has an unapproved lot is paying two. He gets the same package I do. I still don't understand. I don't know why the numbers can't be closer together. Because we're all dealing with the same amenities, the same package. He's getting the same thing I'm getting. But it's only costing him two dollars more a month. I agree, and, and, and we touched on that today. I understand, uh, um, and I. I have a feeling we're not going to agree on this point, but the reality is, is the majority of this plan benefits people, the improved property owners that live here and play here. Um, and yes, there is absolutely the exception. There are those people that live in Bentonville that have a membership lot, absolutely. But they are the exception to the rule. The majority of the unimproved property owners do not use it. I meant reference nine percent. So nine percent of our unimproved. I I focus on the ninety-one percent that do not use our amenities. Um, they have your point of view is, but they have the rights. They have the same rights as us, and they have the ability to use them. And it's there. Um, they can use it. But the reality is they don't, and we feel that this is a reasonable. Uh, there, you know, we feel that this is reasonable. We may not agree, but we feel it's reasonable. Yes, sir. So let's say I just bought a photo ID card yesterday. Great question. Great what question. Happens? I missed it. Okay. I missed that point. I'm sorry. If you purchase anything that still has a life to it, last week you purchased an a, a annual golf membership, you purchased a photo ID card, you, put, you registered your whatever, okay? We will calculate the difference. We will deduct how much you've used. Okay, so we'll prorate it and we'll credit your account. But I still have to get a, a new activity card after January 1st? Uh, we'll probably phase those in. You know, not we prefer not to have 10,000 people come to <laughs> member services all at one time. Uh, that would probably be a wise thing. Uh, but we're gonna credit your account, that's a great point, and uh, we, we wanted to make sure. So if you are, uh, a lot of our um, fitness memberships, a lot of our golf memberships, um, property owners will renew in December or January. That's just the, the schedule that they've been on forever and ever. You get immediate benefit, right off the bat, immediate savings. So yes, we will take care uh, of everybody. What will we'll, you know? I don't want to trivialize it because I'm not the one that does it. But IT is going to have to do, run a ton of reports, figure it out. Accounting is going to have to apply all those credits. Um, but we'll get it done before the end of the year. Um, but yeah, we, we didn't want to. We didn't want to take advantage of anybody that just got a golf membership, and we go, hey, tough luck. Yes, sir. Uh, mine's kind of a comment that leads to a little bit of a question. So one of the things that I found out today that I could
could have found it on my own, I guess, but I, I thought was uh, was important was that you talked about Hot Springs Village and what their what their dues are now mm -hmm. and how much more they are. Is that something that you can incorporate into this campaign or make, make more people aware of that? I moved here from out of state and I think the fees are extremely reasonable here. And, and just by comparison, that, that helps reinforce kind of what my thoughts were anyway. But I think a lot of people need some help understanding that what we pay is really reasonable. I think that's a great point. Um, we've tried that before, but it doesn't seem to, people are like, I don't care. No. And so from a marketing message, it doesn't. Now what's interesting, and this plays off of this gentleman's question, what Hot Springs Village did is they went, in 15, they went 28 for improved and zero for unimproved, okay? Um, as an increase, you mean? As an increase. It was challenged in court, it, all, it went all the way to the appellate court and they won every single every step of the way. You want a guaranteed win, you go 11 and zero, 15 and zero, guaranteed win. Uh, but what did it do to the hot springs? What I've been told is it just divided the community. It really upset a lot of people. So I'm trying to hit the reasonable. You really want a guarantee? Go 15 and negative two. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll upset a whole bunch of people. And why is that? Because there are uh, uh, 14,100 improved property owners that are uh, in good standing and 20,500 unimproved property owners that are in good standing that can vote. So if they go 11 and minus two, I'm on the, you know. So we tried to, I referenced the balancing and trying to be fair, and in my opinion, 28 and zero was not reasonable. Um, I think 11 and two is, and I could debate that all day long, you know. And ultimately, we're trying to see what's reasonable and what's, you know, what, what makes sense. So, how about one last question? Yes, ma'am. And your 9% that you say that use the amenities that have unimproved, are you factoring in how many of us own improved and unimproved? I, I, I omitted them. I, I okay. excluded them because that would be false. Okay, it good. Would, Thank you. That'd be false. How about, that was a quick one. Anybody over here? I ignore you guys over here so much. We moved here four years ago and I was impressed with the amenities then and I didn't understand how you could afford to keep everything <laughs> because the government just raised the evaluation on my 2008 Ford. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did on mine too. Yeah, and so I think it's reasonable. I think so. Um, thank you all for your time. I'm gonna hang out for a couple minutes if you have any questions. I'm gonna ask you to do one thing for me. Talk to your neighbors. Grab one of these things, talk to your neighbors, Go across the street to that property owner that has always voted no and talk to him. And here's why. I have, I have spoken with several property owners that have said that they've always voted no. And when I went through the plan, they said, this is a great plan. I respect anybody that votes yes or no. I respect, but do so from a point of knowledge. And when I, before I spoke with them, they were making a decision based upon not having knowledge. Once they had the knowledge, they changed their mind. So engage with your neighbors, talk with your neighbors. We, all, all the board members that were here, we cannot do this alone. We can only do it as a community. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it.